Hey guys, welcome back to playing Open Heart Chapter 4. When your latest patient turns out to be an old friend of Dr. Branson, he decides to work the case with you. Are you up to the challenge? Yes! Because we need some more Ethan time. Because <sighs> I want to get to know Ethan more. Like, we've just been hanging out with Bryce, which is fun, but, you know, I'm trying to pursue both of them, so... Come to warn, this chapter did uh, Dick Pitt's sensitive topics relating to childbirth and trauma. Ooh. Open heart. Chapter 4, Dolores. A couple of days later, you wake up to the enticing smell of someone frying a breakfast. Mmm. Well, now of your freshly built bed, you stretch in the dim light of your new bedroom. Still way better than the closet. <laughs> yeah, we're not Harry Potter anymore. You pad out to the living area and take an amazing breakfast spread. Uh, seeing us lay out on the kitchen counter. Well, Sienna, you didn't have to do all this. Don't even try and stop me. She fills the plate for you small. You take it to the table where Lon uh, Landry's furring his brow over a crossword. Stuck. No, just delay. It. What's a several letter word, several letter term for a cold that lasts a long time? Fourth letter is A. Seven letter term for colds that lasts a long time. Honestly, I'm going to look this up and see if I can find anything. So let's see. Seven letter term <clears throat> for colds that last a long time. Uh... Yeah, nothing is popping up. <laughs> oh. oh, wait, hold on. Let me see. Uh, I thought I saw. Coast that lasts a long time. Here we are. Ice ages. Put very simply, ice ages are periods of long-term reductions in the Earth's temperature. <gasps> Ooh, that is tricky. Wow, that's clever. Ice ages. <laughs> I C E A. Perfect. Thanks, Shane. Yeah, I cheated, but you're welcome. <laughs> I've never been good at crosswords. They're always trying to trick you. I love the chance, the way all the answers have to fit in together as a whole, it's why I love diagnosis too. Sienna sits down with you at, as Elijah wills in. I can't wait for Wayne to see this place, he's really going to love it. Your boyfriend, wasn't he supposed to come over last night and the night before? He keeps having to cancel, his work really demands- Honey, he's probably cheating on you. I'm sorry, but he's probably cheating on you, like... And if it really is, like, I'm sorry, but she needs a new boo. Well, we can't wait to meet him, so does yours. Wait, what? <laughs> um, oh, we're talking about the job. Uh, I mean, I don't want to put her down. I don't want to put her down. If he's anything like you, I'm sure we're going to love him. Well, he's not all that much like me, but I hope you love him anyway. Jackie shuffles into the living room. I uh, live air, still have a seat. She yawns, pours a mug of coffee, and takes a seat. Why did anyone wake me up? Last thing I remember is reading a textbook on my bed and then she rubs at a textbook shaped mark on her forehead. At least I slept well. This place is really nice and quiet at night. Now from what I hooked on the TV and stereo last night, we're officially ready for a housewarming party. But the place is so clean. Ooh yes, I can't wait. Um, I can introduce Wayne to everybody. 
I was thinking we could invite all the interests, maybe a bunch of the rest, and it's a great chance to get to know everyone. No, sir, just please. Apartment doesn't need to be Christian with the keg stand. A place sounds like... You want? Why not? Right? We gotta go big. This will be um, the first part I've ever hosted. Wait, really? Yeah, I never ever lived away from home before Boston. Not even from med school. The folks made me apply close to home so I could keep living with them. Were they hard asses? No, they just worried about me being off my own. But I'm out in the world now. And ready to party? <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Alright, who's ready to go? I want to get in early see if the rumors are true. No rumors. About Dr. Bernanucci, where is he just up and quit sometime yesterday? No announcement, no going away part, no nothing? But what about the diagnosis team? What's not his department? Dr. Ramsey must be in charge of it now. Awesome. You think back to the fight you overheard between Ethan and Dr. Bernanucci the other night. I hope I'm saying this last name right. Get to this, Naveen. I won't let you. It must be done, Ethan. Not everything's in your control. It's time you finally learned that. Alright, let's go over there. We haven't even eaten breakfast. Coffee is my breakfast. Not a good girl. You're on the fifth floor heading to check on the patient we hear Ethan's voice from our nearby room. This is preposterous, Harper. They're not ready. Through the blinds you see Ethan and Chief um, Emery standing close together talking furtively. Ethan. As far as go quiet and possibly hear Harper puts her hand softly to Ethan's cheek. <gasps> Oh, are they a thing? What could they be talking about? I'm, I'm nosy. I wanna... Cautiously move towards the doorway and lean against the wall, pretending to read a chart. I'm not asking you, Ethan. I'm telling you. What else is new? I know this is your hospital now. You're caught, but I'm warning you. I'll fight every step of the way on this. What else is new? She smiles triumphantly, giving him a light kiss on the cheek before walking away. Hide. Oh, they're coming. You burn your head and your chest. Harper breathes by and I give you a second glance. You're breathing a sigh of relief. When? We eavesdropping? Yes. <laughs> you stand at the door with arms folded, waiting for your response. Dr. Ramsey, I holds up a hand and closes his eyes. A second thought? I don't have time for this. Let's get the feeble excuse again with our lives, shall we? He marches past you impatiently. That actually could have been worse. You walk around the corner and hear a familiar voice. Hey there, Doc. You turn to see Bryce, Will, and Kyra down the hall uh, on the bed. Kyra, I haven't seen you since the surgical intern stole you away. You say stole. I say Riley took a surgical case. Ain't got two hot doctors fighting over me? Did the cancer get me? Because this feels like a died and gone to heaven thing. Honey, I'm gay and I'm into Bryce. <laughs> we hook up. You have a very morbid sense of humor, Kyra. So your surgery is soon? It's right now, uh, like, told me. This is about yours truly. Oh, well, good luck. What, Kyra? You're having a lobe of your lung removed today? I know, right? It happened kind of fast as the CT results came back. But if the last thing I see before I die is your face, well, there are worse ways to go. I'm not going to flirt with her. You're strong, Kyra. I know you can survive this. I guess it'll be harder to die now I have a friend cheering me on. Kyra, what do we say about all that death talk? Sorry, boss. Let's start planning for retirement. Good. Sorry, Dr. Valentine, but I have to get Miss Santana here to the OR. You pull Bryce away for a moment just out of Kyra's earshot. Bryce, just one more thing. Take care of her for me. Why would I say don't screw this up? What? I mean, I'm not trying to flirt. She could be in better hands. Seriously, my hands are incredible. I don't doubt that. <clears throat> I mean it, Bryce. Bryce drops the megawatt smile laser reassuring him on your shoulder. I'm only assistant, but Dr. Zimmerman is an amazing surgeon. Kyra would be golden if we we'll bring her back safe. Thanks, Bryce, really. He smiles and returns to Kyra, wheeling her off to surgery. From the bed, Kyra waves goodbye. Wave back. Valentina, what are you standing around for? Get down to the ER and see if they need any patients admitted. Yes, Dr. Marani. Whew. You head down to emergency room awards, they're looking annoyed as a few senior doctors try to talk to her. I have a patient with chrome hydrosis. If you like the cis blue sweat, it's pretty cool. Thanks, but no thanks. Dr. Emery, how I brought you cappuccino? I drink tea. She walks away from the heading your way with the cold look on her face. <laughs> What's up, your body? I have to say that. 
honey, that's why I had to ask my last patient. It was a model train. You can't help but snicker. <laughs> Glad one of us found it amusing. You look around the era, most of the beds are empty. Pretty quiet down here. Uh, I don't know. What are you even talking about? There are no good cases. And that means fewer people are seriously sick. That's a win on my book. If you're so desperate for a cool case, why didn't you just go with that attending? She looks at you from her weighing something in her mind. Super not interested to explain myself to you. Okay. Just then you hear the well approaching alarms, though. You and the war share a split second look at the rush of the ambulance dog arriving just the ambulance backs in. <clears throat> Doors fly open and a muscular paramedic climbs out, helping the nurses unload an unconscious woman in an oxygen mask. Ooh, hello, cutie. Dolores huts an office fire. Her co-workers evacuate in time, but she's pregnant and couldn't move fast enough. How long has she been cut? Just... Oh. She didn't catch the flames, just smoke. She panicked and got stuck in the upstairs bathroom. How are the vitals? Elevated BP, but she and the baby both have strong heartbeats. Please see your smoke and inhalation, though. Hopefully, I got them out in time to avoid any permanent damage. Where were the firefighters? We beat the fire department to the scene. I heard her screaming, so I broke in and carried her out. We'll get her a minute into a bed. Dr. Valentin, Dr. Emery, which of you is taking this? Smoke inhalation. inhalation. <laughs> it's all yours. I'll wait for something interesting. What? I'll take I'll be around. Really? She's re <laughs> You cannot think like that as a doctor. A word departs as the nurses um will Dolores to the elevator. You linger behind with the paramedic. So you ran into a rage in front of to save a pregnant woman? Well yeah, wouldn't you? You cute though. I'll be that brave. I wouldn't be that saint. <laughs> I mean I would hope I would be that brave. But you never know until you're in a moment. It's just instant. You're a doctor. I'm sure you won't hesitate. I haven't seen you around Edinburgh. Are you new? Heck yeah. It's my four week, uh, first week. I'm Dr. Valentino. I always just saying you shake it. Raphael Ver Averio. I guess I'll be seeing you around then, Dr. Valentino. Heck yes. <laughs> Pretty often. I hope so. I work here, so yeah. I'll <laughs> say this. I hope so too. Ooh. The walkie talkie clips clip to Raphael's chest squawks. We got a two car crash at the uh, corner of Congress of Franklin. That's my cue. Be seeing you. Ooh, my favorite sound uh music <laughs> from this soundtrack. He had to meet um Dolores in her room up ahead. Mrs. Martinez is doing her daily laps on the floor. You're surprised to see her walking with Ethan holding onto his arm for support. Every time I hear this music, I want to be dramatic. So, what did you do? I blamed it on a dog, of course. You wicked thing. Oh, but I'm sure you're a lovely boy. More like a lovable scoundrel, I got away with everything. Everyone must love Miss Martinez. Mrs. Martinez. Miss Martinez releases Ethan and he has your way. His demeanor changes the moment he sees you, of course. He's dropping again, are we, Valentino? No, just, it looked like you were having fun. I care for the will being of the people who's entrusted their care to me, rookie, that's all. Right, okay, I gotta go. Dolores Hudson isn't going to examine herself. Did you just say Dolores Hudson? Yes. I'm coming with you. You know. Are you related to her? Is she your wife? <laughs> Ethan follows you to Dolores' room. You really define Dolores uh, conscious. Her oxygen mask replaced in those two. Hi, Dolores. I'm Ethan. Uh, Dolores, where have you gotten yourself into this time? There was a fire in my office. I was upstairs falling away some papers. Then everybody shut down. I couldn't get down the stairs. I'll call your sister so they can fly in from Annapolis in the morning. I'm so glad you're safe. Maybe it's a sister? I'm glad you have super uh, man on payroll. The EMT who carried me out was a total hunk. Uh, I don't mean to interrupt, but I like to listen to Dolores' chest. Dolores, this is Dr. Valentine. Dolores is my very first patient when I was an intern. Ooh. Wow, Dolores, was he always so handsome? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Come on, man. You 
was cute, but to be honest, I think he's aged like a fine wine. That's about ten the examination if you don't mind. <laughs> now you want me to hurry up. Take out your stethoscope, warming the cold metal on your palm before you press it to her chest. <clears throat> Deep um, breath for me, Dolores. And if you don't mind my asking, what brought you in back to then? Burst of panics. I was totally freaked out, but Ethan calmed me down. Like, Ethan kept in touch a bit for over the years. <laughs> Dr. Ramsey has friends. That's cute. Got my first patient content info too. You're making me want to email her and check in. You should. It meant a lot to me. I gotta say, I'm surprised. It doesn't seem like you uh, to care about patients once they're walked out the door. I was young. On hard days, knowing they were out there living life to the fullest, it kept me going. Turn to eat the as you remove the stethoscope. Her breathing is short as you expected. I think we should get her a chest x ray. Eat the frequency research chart. You move to eat the side, your voice low. What is it? Her elevated BP should be low after the smoke inhalation. Let's take your urine sample too. Excuse me, Dr. Valentine. I remember having my press on me when the hunk carried me in. Did they bring it in? Find the back beside her bed and hand it to her. She searches it frowning. It's not here. I must have dropped it outside the office. It's not stupid, but I saw this adorable stuffed frog on my lunch break and had to buy it from my little tadpole. She strokes her swollen belly as she talks. Both of my parents are gone, and the uh, father's not in the picture. I just want everything to be perfect for him. This sounds stupid, Dolores. In fact, it sounds like you're going to be a great mom. Thank you. I just, I really wish I hadn't lost that little frog. Uh... <laughs> uh... I mean, this will give me a chance to, like, hang out with Ethan, but... Ugh. Will it be worth it though? I don't know. Uh, wait, how much is it going to cost me? Ooh. Uh, after this all over, I hope you find something else for the baby. Something just as good. Yeah, I like that. Maybe Ethan can help too. I do have those little stress ball squeezes on my desk with a kid like that. They're hopeless. <laughs> but dependably so, Dr. Valentine, I want that urine sample run immediately. <clears throat> Later that evening. Dr. Valentine, Miss Hussle's urine analysis results. As you read through them, you feel your heart sing. You go to find Ethan. What is it? You peek through the blinds to Dolores' room. Ethan's laughing with her as they watch TV. Knock lightly, Ethan looks up and comes out to meet you. You hand him the last, his face falls as he reads them. She has serious pre clampsia. Her baby's in trouble, isn't it? Yes, let's go tell her. He turns to go in, and you have to stay biting your lip. He looks back. This is the job, rookie. Come on. The less my face, she knows how serious you both look. What is it, Ethan? Ethan looks to you and nods for you to give her the news. Oh, Dolores, I don't want you to worry. That's what people say when well, you should be worried. Have you ever heard of preeclampsia? It's a serious condition that affects up to 1 in 10 pregnant women. In many cases, manageable if minor, but I'm afraid yours is quite serious. How serious? The blood flow of the placenta is slowing. It could soon deprive your baby of vital nutrients and oxygen. The baby's at risk. But everything feels fine. I can still feel the baby kicking. Doris, this just means we're going to have to deliver the baby early. No, it's too soon. Babies delivered at 26 weeks have a good chance of survival. A chance? He'll have to spend some time in the NICU, and yes, there's risk of post-birth complications. And some don't make it at all. Is my baby in danger right now? Not immediately, no, but... <clears throat> Did my little top will stay put? Dolores... No, either just just give me a week. Give me as long as you can, please. I'll give you tonight to come to your senses. I'll keep checking on her. Maybe we could talk her around. No, just go home. You should have been over for hours already. But I'm taking over this case. You're not ready for it. What? He stalks away before you get answered. Stung you. Look back through the window at Dolores. 
She lies in bed, stroking her belly slowly. As she turns over, you see tears rolling down her cheeks. Man. Feeling low, you head downstairs. Your heart feels like it's being crushed. Hey, tough day. I can really use some good news right now. And let's go give you some. What? He leads you to the nearby room. Through the window, you spot Kyra asleep after surgery. She looks so peaceful. Everything went with the love Comey. Look, told me <laughs> flawlessly, and she let me place a cleanse, which I'm pretty sure made all the difference. I say I'm pretty good at taking people's breath away. Yes, you are. <laughs> you throw your arms from a bright squeeze at him. Well, hey, I mean, I totally deserve this, but shh. You just hold him, letting his embrace cheer you up. So, when is your shift in? About two hours ago. I want to stay on my preeclampsia patient, but Dr. Ramsey dismissed me. You know how it be. Well, I was going to hear this concert come with. <gasps> it should be fun. It looks like you could seriously use a pick me up. Purchasing this premium outfit gets you a night on the town with brides. You know what? I want to do it. <sighs> you know what? I haven't had a chance to do a diamond option with brides at all. So let's have some fun. <clears throat> And I get a free outfit. Or not technically free, but I mean, at least I don't have to pay extra for it. All right, let's roll out. Roll out, daddy. The venue in Somerville is packed when you arrive. Bryce leads you through the crowd to spot, to spot with a good view of the stage. How's this? Music is pumping, eh? Perfect. You lean close to his ears so you can talk over the music. So, are you into this kind of music? How do you... Uh, say this online join some groups for locals as soon as I match at Edinburgh people seem to like this band so I figure I'll check them out so you never even listened to them before nope you didn't even look them up to see if you like them first don't run the front I'm all about trying new things new city new music new people I mean you get it you agreed to come out before I even tell you where we're going true I guess that's true and I'm glad it's why we click so well I love your spont spontaneity <laughs> Okay, but what if we don't like it? We leave, we stay, who cares? I don't worry about small stuff like that. Life and death is literally our job. We can't have some perspective, who can? Good point, you're not exactly what I expected, LaHella. Am I saying this now? <laughs> oh, no. oh yeah, what'd you expect? Skin deep beauty. <laughs> uh, I mean, I didn't expect him to be an owl, so I expect the even to be the... That was an insult. <laughs> But I think I'm going to take as a compliment. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be. I'm glad you could be straight with me. Believe me, I've been counting on my whole life for a lot of reasons. How I look is um, by far the least of them. Where were the others? It's either does it hear you or pretends not to. He glances back at the bar. How about drink my treat? Let's dance. You leave Bryce into the throng of dancers just in front of the stage, bouncing to the music as you go. When you turn back to Bryce, he's already moving to the B. You have moves! He smirks down so close to you. Of course I have moves. This body wasn't just made for saving lives. I'm gonna be flirty. Why don't you show me what that body... <laughs> what else that body was made for? Bryce bites his lip and smiles to you, moving close to you. He puts his hands to your waist. You can feel the heat of him through the thin fabric of your shirt. Is that what you really want? Oh, snap! Kiss me. <laughs> Bryce pulls you against the closing where a little space remains between you. Come here. Ooh. You part to listen as this more colored eyes and circle your waist, Stephen a kiss. Nearby someone tells you to get her. I wish. Heck, I wish. I think we lost the crowd. I'm not particularly worried about their opinion, Shane. Bryce looks curl to smile against yours. You both ignore the dancers around you, focusing entirely on each other. Wow. That was hot. <clears throat> Let your page rumble to your pocket as you and Bryce leave the club. You pull it out, heart sick as you read the message. I don't know, what is it? What is it? They rushed my preeclampsia patient to surgery. I had to get back to the hospital. They rushed back to the hospital if I eat the sin alone in the waiting room. Dr. Renz, what happened? Where's Dolores? You did that's the answer for so long you start to wonder if he hurt you. Just you open your mouth to repeat yourself. He looks at you. 
Dolores had a seizure full eclampsia and no choice but to deliver the baby. It's 50-50 he'll survive the night. And Dolores? She died. What? <sighs> Man. Uh, your eyes get wet. It's hard to get a full breath. Dr. Ramsey, I'm so... I'm fine. Before you could say the Elsie stands, now looking at you, he strides away, vanishing around the corner. <sighs> Dang it. Ugh. Man, it literally is like one minute you're looking at a person and they're just so happy. They're smiling. They're crying. And then the next, they're just gone. Like, wow. Into the neonato intensive care unit and approach the incubator. <clears throat> um, baby. Yo, this baby actually looks real. Because <laughs> all the other babies we've seen, they just... Nah, fam. Your heart times as you read the tiny newborn's name tag, Ethan Hudson. Can I help you? This baby's mother was my patient. She got to name him. She told me just that she was rushed to the ER. The poor thing will know more in the morning. Do you mind if I sit with them tonight? Feel free. The tending leaves as you sit on the uh, couch beside the incubator. You reach in with the gloved hand to stroke the baby's tiny fingers. What are you still doing here? You turn around to see Ethan. I'm going to stay with him tonight. I had the idea of him having to fight for his life alone. There are plenty of doctors working overnight. If something happens, they'll be here. I know. He now selects the baby expression gentler than you've ever seen it. Would you mind if I join you? Oh my gosh. What? The back to back? I didn't expect to get another. I want to do it. I want to do it. I'm spending all my money in this book. Or in this chapter. And I don't regret it. Clean air room here. Get the sits beside you on the couch. Together you listen to the gentle whoosh of the ventilator. I'm honestly glad they spend that um diamond option earlier with Ethan. You blink away tears turning your face away from Ethan so he can't see. He knows. The first patient I lost was in my fourth week. I didn't make any mistakes. He has stage four met metastatic meloma. He just fought like hell and lost. I liked him. He wasn't much older than I am now. I knew he didn't have long to live, but it still hit me hard. Probably doesn't get any easier. There'll be a new patient tomorrow and another after that. If I get to my head about this, I'll let them down. <clears throat> That's true. You don't want one death to become two. But you also shouldn't push it out entirely out. Feel it, learn from it, and vow to be better. Just know this wasn't your fault or mine's or Dolores's. We all made the best decision we could have with the information we had. But I need to be better than this. She trusts us, she was your friend. And I can see why she was so sweet. She was, but you will have some genuinely turbo people as patients too. You need to be just as dedicated to their care. You have to be careful of playing favors, even if it means denying how we feel. Why are you being so nice to me? You're usually so... Demanding. <laughs> yeah. You have the stairs of the space thinking. There are doctors with unlimited patients. I'm not one of them, obviously. Energy I can use, socialize, or make a someone's day better, I put towards my patients. They're who I'm here for. Be your teacher too. When I'm in it, you should model yourself out to any of us. Idolatry among physicians is absurd. <clears throat> We're here to teach you practical uh, medicine. You need to find your own way of being a doctor. But how do I do that? You already are. The baby stretches his tiny hands, open and close. Ethan offers him a finger. He clutches his tie. Oh, she named him after you. Slice fast with surprise. He turns to the name tag. Is that an apple's move as he swallows? I see she did. You must have known Dolores a long time. Over 10 years, when I first emailed her, I only meant to check in. But she was recently divorced, full and all, so she insisted on coffee. And then I turned into more emails to meeting once every couple of months for Sunday roast. She sounds like a good friend. I didn't make friends easily when I started here, so I was always grateful to her for that. He swallows the false silence, staring at Dolores' baby. His eyes are red. I'm going to touch his hand. <laughs> you reach over and put your hand over his. I'm so sorry this happened. He looks up at you, eyes shining. 
<clears throat> he holds your gaze for a long moment, his hand warm beneath yours. Me too. He clears his throat. I think we need coffee. I can get some. No, I'll go. When it's ticked by, you watch the baby's stomach rise and fall with every shallow breath. I said a little top hole in and out. You threw a turnips with two muscles steaming coffee, except you are gratefully taking the cost of sip. This doesn't taste like cafeteria coffee. This is from my pirate coffee machine. As soon as I got office, I vowed never to drink that caffeinated dishwater again. <laughs> Nobody knows I have it, so. I won't tell us all. This will be our little secret. You both make yourselves more comfortable on a lusty. I assume the Lord's night. I mean, baby. And talk longer to the night. Oh, this is so cute. Oh, I'll get it to know him. Shane, shake, wake up. What? Remember where you are yourself by right? rubbing your eyes and look to the incubator. <clears throat> he made it! He's getting stronger. He glanced at your phone notes in the time. Oh, crap. I have rounds in 20 minutes. I need to get a shower. I'll sit with him a little bit longer. Stand and stretch, giving Lord, Dolores Bay one last stroke before you head out. Hang in there, little one. Shame. You look back, you notice how tired he looks, his hair muscle, and his jaw dark with stubble. Thank you. Aww. <clears throat> Later in the morning, after rounds, you gather with your fellow interest in the atrium. So what happened exactly? Don't know, we all got the same page. Uh, Chief Emery has something to tell the interns. You and your friends join the uh, growing crowd of medical interests cluster in front of Harper. Either stands behind her, arms folded. As you're all undoubtedly hurt by now, Dr. Bernardi has retired, which means the diagnosis team now has one open position. Instead of filling the hole, we will be selecting one young doctor to join to train with the team as a junior fellow. Ooh. And trust one of you will be the newest member of Edith Brooks' diagnosis team under Dr. Ramsey. What? Did I just hear that right? Oh my god, I will have literal dreams about this. Uh-oh. <clears throat> this is a credible opportunity for one of you to spend your residency facing the most difficult case imaginable. Keyword 1. We will be raking you daily. The best performing interest at the end of your first year will be selected. Ooh, game on, guys. If you want to complete, tell me by tomorrow night, uh, midnight. And I warn you, the selection process will be ruthless. I advise you to sit this out. If you choose to ignore that advice, good luck. Either walks away, ignoring the discussion excitement that break up behind him. This is the coolest thing ever. Oh man, I'm so stoked. You slip away from your friends, hurry out to eat there. Dr. Renzo, wait, was this what you were talking about with Dr. Emery yesterday? Yes. But you told her we weren't ready. You're not. He meets your eyes. But are any of us ever really ready for anything? Nope. <laughs> Who will enter the competition? And can your friends just survive the heat? Keep planning to find out. Wow. Who this chapter was intense. But I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed those two diamond scenes too with Bryce and Ethan. So anyways, I'll see you guys next week for the next chapter of Open Hearts. So see you then. Bye-bye.